I'm, I'm telling you guys, please believe me, five years ago I was this. I was like, you know, what kind of resistance did y'all meet in the industry with popular culture when the time was perhaps <laughs> per se? I was, I was so, I was so that, oh God. And now, let me tell you, where I am now, I accept and I understand that I don't know anything. The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill is considered to be one of the greatest albums of all time. This is one of the few hip hop albums that are so good that they transcended hip hop. In an alternate universe, Lauryn Hill is considered the GOAT unanimously. Even in this universe, she has a great case for being the GOAT and she only has one solo album. Think about it like this, Lauryn Hill broke into hip hop with the Fugees. The group was comprised of Pras, Wyclef John, and Lauryn Hill, and the group will break into the mainstream with their album the score Never had to battle with a bulletproof. there's a couple of massive hits on this album fuji law is a great song it's one of the better uses of samples in the 90s that i can think of the song killing me softly is the most memorable on this album This song is so big that my mom that doesn't rock with rap at all, she sings this song. Of course, Lauryn Hill is the star of the track again. Mainly because this is Lauryn Hill's song. There's little to no contributions from the other members of the Fugees, but that's besides the point. One of the more notable songs on this album is Ready or Not. The song's hook samples ready or not here i come by the delphonics but lauren switches up the hook a little bit to make her fit her situation lauren had a complicated situation with fuji member white clef i believe the story is that they were in a relationship but then he married someone else but then they had an affair it was crazy but that's where the switching lyrics come into play because they switch the lyrics from make you happy to make you want me. Make you yeah. want me. Apparently this was so emotional for Lauren Hill that she ended up crying in the take that was used for the song. And listen, that's gotta be tough. Like Lauren was dead ass telling the world, I wish this person wanted me the way that I want them. But she had to keep it in code because like obviously the person doesn't want them. And that might be embarrassing for some people to admit at a large scale. Like just with that alone, I know some people were looking at her like, damn, that's kind of stupid to hold on to that type of stuff. But also that guy's married. And that has to do with a large part of why the Fuji's broke up, which would suck for everybody in the group not named Lauren Hill. Cause Lauren Hill was carrying I ain't even gonna lie. And this would be evident with Lauren Hill's first solo album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. By the time the album was released, Lauren Hill had given birth to her first kid, and love seemed to be something heavy on Lauren Hill's brain. The album takes place in a classroom setting, and the teacher is basically teaching a lesson about love. And Lauren happens to be one of the students in this classroom. In my interpretation of it, as students discuss love and what love means to them, Lauren Hill is dazing off, basically creating songs based on what the students are saying. That's why the first actual song on the album is a brag rap. It's funny how money changes situation. Basically, she's addressing the Fugees breaking up, and the focus of the track is not necessarily the focus of the album. It's just Lauren Hill showing off that she still has the bars. The beat is real boom bat type stuff, so Lauren just flows beautifully on this track. But at the end of the track, we're introduced to the theme of the album when the teacher asks the students what they think about love. Love. It's a song called Love. It's no song called they named some love songs and movies about love. So my theory is that because the students are talking about love, Lauren Hill starts thinking about love, and the tracks that we see on the album are Lauren Hill's thoughts. I guess while daydreaming in class. It's the thing that everybody does, and that's where I think the name of the album comes into play with the miseducation. And that's why the next track on the album is X Factor. In the listening of this album, there's a lot of times where I go like, mmm, that's some real shit. Cause this specific song, she starts off by saying something like, it could all be so simple, but you make it so hard and like, on some real shit, people be overcomplicating their life. Not necessarily just with relationships, but with life goals in general. Like, But overall, this song is more about a toxic relationship. You said you died for me, I think the title, The Miseducation of Florin Hill, 
isn't saying miseducation in the traditional sense. Being that Lauren Hill is a rapper, and actually a great one at that, I wouldn't be surprised that it's a play on words. Instead of the miseducation of Lauren Hill being a statement about how Lauren Hill wasn't being educated in the right way, I think the miseducation of Lauren Hill could refer to the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Because a lot of the tracks on this album feel like Lauren Hill educating the audience. And the best example of this is her track Doop That Thing. This was the lead single for the album, and the song would be big enough to top the charts. She was the first woman in hip hop to do so, by the way. And by the way, this song didn't only reach number one, it debuted at number one. Not only that, this was her debut single, so it became the first song to debut at number one and also be an artist's debut single. Lauren Hill is just that good, man. Getting into the song though, the track is a great lesson on what not to do when looking for love. She starts off by addressing Woman. She basically calls women out for being with people that really don't deserve to be with them. But she does so in a way where it's not condescending. Sure, it can sound a little harsh, but it's clear that what she's saying she means with good intentions. And I say this because the intro refers to an Islamic term for the straight path, which is basically to live life in a way that makes God happy. But part of wanting someone to do better is to point out where they're going wrong. And I don't mean you should insult people. All right, I think you should tell them what's wrong, but say it in a way where it's clear that you're saying it from a place of love. But just in case you think Lauren is being too preachy, she wraps up the verse by explaining that she has also been in the same place. Lauren is only human. Don't think I haven't been to the same predicament. Basically telling the audience like, yo, chill out. Let it go through your head. Think about how silly it is and then come again. Which also falls in line with the whole thing about making something more difficult than it needs to be. Just think about it, think about how much of a problem it isn't, and then come again. Life will really be that much easier if you do that. Don't think she only goes at women because guys get it too. And guys get the harsher side of Lauren Hill. And I know it might put off some guys like, oh, why are they harsher to guys? But like, come on, bro. It doesn't matter. But also, Lauren Hill clearly wants guys to be better. It's not that she's saying all oh, guys are trash, uh, they're good for nothing, blah, 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 blah. She's saying this set of guys should get their act straight, make it a little bit better for women, but also you help yourself and stop focusing on these things that don't matter. And then when you do that, Come again. Uh -huh. the hook for this song does a great job at driving the point home, telling girls and guys to watch out. Because when you make your whole personality, your money or your body, then you're actively opening yourself up for people who are only gonna want you for that thing. She's not saying this to be holier than thou. She's saying this so you can avoid some of the things that she went through and as a result you can live a better life and a healthier one. Like sure, in life you're gonna deal with bad relationships, that's just a part of life. But she's trying to help you avoid these type of relationships where you might feel less than human. Where at the end of the day you might think that someone only likes you for something that really isn't you. But you know, if you've been through these type of relationships the important thing is to not give up, you know. It happens. It's kind of silly to miss out on good things just because you're stuck on what happened in the past. But that's just me. Anyways, the album would go on to get massive critical praise. And the album of the year is The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill would become the first woman to win five Grammys in one night. And she would also take home the Grammy that people consider the most important in album of the year. And by the way, she is only one of two rappers to do that. Technically three because Outkast is a duo. This is crazy because this is hip hop music and you know what I mean? It's like, you know.
And it's been more than 20 years since Lauryn Hill dropped this album. And this is basically her only official album because after this, she would basically retire from the music industry. But it speaks to how great Lauryn Hill was that even with just one album to her name, people think she's one of the greatest, if not the greatest rapper to lay hands on a mic. And especially because she was a woman. I didn't bring this up for the most part, but like people were hella misogynistic in the 90s, especially in hip hop. So the fact that she managed to pull it off speaks solely to how great of a talent she was. Being a woman in the industry just in general is 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 um is not very easy. Um for some reason the industry has a tendency to think that there's um always some male puppet master, some puppeteer, you know, pulling the strings and that women are just like yeah. And that's I guess all that I wanted to say. In the past couple of months I've been getting more and more into Lauren Hill's music and I just wanted to talk about it. Even though she gets the proper recognition, I sometimes feel like it isn't enough. So with that being said, shout out to Lauren Hill. Unconditional love. Unconditional love is we don't even know it because if a person stops stimulating us, we stop loving them. You're not interesting to talk to anymore. Goodbye. But that real love, that love that sometimes is difficult. <laughs> difficult to have that's that love she's got a great voice as well by the way i forgot to mention that shout out to lauren hill and with that being said shout out to jay dilla i don't know what else to say uh, so i'm gonna let the outro roll <laughs>